Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm the co-host and the noob. I'm Caliban, kissy you. <laughs> and we're a couple of magical people ready to moon cosmic power make up this episode. Today we are talking about episode number 112. Shin no Mishia wa dare. Hikari to kage no keasu in Japanese. Who is the true messiah? Chaos of Light and Darkness, the English translation, and the English title, Showstoppers. Yeah, who is the Messiah? Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we will. It's not will. Showstoppers. It's not a show. We've had a show. This is a movie. You say, right. lights, camera, murder, or something like that, <laughs> right? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me write my title down. Lights, camera, murder. Uh, I think we met would uh, be a fan of that because... Uh, well... Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about I it. I guess we will. Or just right now. <laughs> you know, what we usually talk about right now is what's going on on social media. Yeah. And uh, what's going on on iTunes mm-hmm. vis-a-vis our reviews. But I don't see any reviews. What? They ain't no reviews. No reviews. No new reviews, that is. And we need new reviews from yous. Listen, news. <laughs> I think we took that as far as it'll go. Uh, we need reviews and ratings on iTunes, on Spotify. Uh, we can get ratings on Spotify, on sure. Apple Podcasts, you know, wherever you're listening to the show. Absolutely. Um, I'm not always, uh, you know, they don't come, a little bird doesn't bring me them. So I always kind of look around every <laughs> once in a while. But my last time I looked, I didn't see anything. So okay. uh, give us a review if you would, because it really does help us out. And when you do... Um, Join us on Discord. Let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoot us a line at sailornoob2 at gmail.com or let us know yes. on Twitter or Facebook that you sent us a review because we want to read that review. Yeah, we absolutely Although, do want to no, read that review. when you send us that message, you're tying your name to that review. <laughs> so you do with that information what you want. Uh, I'm, give us a five stars. That's what we want. Well, but, you, know. you know, it's up to you. <laughs> it well, we is. Know what you, we know it your is name. true. We know yeah. what your name is. <laughs> We're, we're watching you Nobody's gonna leave through, a review now. through the internet. Oh, no. <laughs> Great. We scared him off. The tyranny of needing a good review. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, we'd love to get a review from any of you. Yes. Any and all it's of true. you. I'm doing it again. <laughs> Lots of rhyming. feel a little giddy um, right now. And a, a little – actually, I'm feeling like, uh, like sleep-deprived like a giddy. <laughs> If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling so. the opposite. Okay. Um, chemically. Okay. I had a monster today. Big yeah. surprise. Uh-huh. And then later on in the afternoon, I was like, uh, I could go for a little coffee. And so I had a Starbucks oh double gosh. shot, not realizing that's not, well, it is coffee, but it's a coffee energy drink. So I essentially had oh my goodness. two energy drinks. And so I am only slightly vibrating but um, I've probably got limited time here before the crash. Uh, yeah, you're 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 going up the walls so right the now. Second, Cal, Cal, come back, boom, come back down this here. This boom goes all you, you can't tell. It's <laughs> it goes all over the place. So it's following me. Fine, and I have the live mic if I go farther than that. But, right, right. Uh, yeah. So if I'm uh, in the second half of the show, a little uh, I'm moving in slow motion. You know what's going on. <laughs> okay. A coffee energy drink. I cannot think of just about anything more terrifying and perhaps enticing. Well, it didn't. Well, coffee is an energy drink, but I didn't want one of those. um, The the glass bottle ones. There's so much sugar in those. There's so much sugar. I I thought I'd try something different. The tall boy can, and of course, like that's tall boy can is now the the evidence of it being an energy drink, (laughs) right? So yes. Okay, good to know. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't know that I would have known that. I would have just been like, oh, it's a coffee drink in a can. La, 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 yeah. la. La, 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 la. Why Ooh, is my heart beating so fast? Yeah, right. Exactly. I can see through time. <laughs> uh, well, maybe you can see through time like Pluto. And wow. uh, you can give us a recap yeah. of today's episode. Let's burn off some of this energy. Yeah. We begin in the basement. <laughs> We hear footsteps, and they lead to 
a large room. Uh-huh. Um, there's colored lights on the ceiling. Uh, there's a bunch of creepy dolls everywhere. Yeah. And mist. Oh, and there's a stage and a big chair uh-huh. and a creepy little girl sitting on it. Yes. And she looks like um, like Susie Sue. Maybe. Okay. Uh, you know, there's an old time microphone in front of her. Maybe it is Susie Sue. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, I did all that stuff with Susie Sue. Uh, the song Persephone by Cocteau Twins would be a great soundtrack for this scene. Okay. So gonna, I don't. I don't know. We're that gonna song. dig into my kiddie pool depth of goth <laughs> music knowledge here. All right. We'll see how far I can take it. Doctor Giggles appears and says, "How is our Messiah of Silence feeling today?" Mm-hmm. And she doesn't respond aloud. But a set of speakers says, my head feels heavy, knees weak, mom's spaghetti. Oh no, I should have known that's exactly where you were going. <laughs> She's choking. Uh, she says, uh, hurry, hurry and get me pure, perfect hearts. And he says, ah, yes, the pure hearts, the pure hearts of humans. The hearts will turn into energy for your awakening, those hearts. Uh-huh. Weird cut to a class where Dr. Giggles is doing a demonstration with some birds, some cormorants. Yes. Uh, and these cormorants look like, I don't know if they're robots, but they look fake. They, they look do. like toys or something. I mean, this would be up the alley of, uh, of this whole organization. But yeah. uh, he's talking about the fact that they will dive to catch their prey relentlessly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this case, the prey is a pure heart enclosed in a bubble. So somewhere, somebody didn't have a heart. They're getting Good hearts point. from somewhere. We've never seen them successfully pull in a heart. No. But uh, they've Unless got it's somebody's a toy heart. heart, too. Oh. Oh. Maybe it's Udile's heart. But it wouldn't be pure, though. That she thing would, would come out like a lump a of crap. Heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he says to his four pupils... Not five. I know. Speaking of you, Dial. Mm. That this will be how they take hearts going forward. The demon will swallow the heart and bring it back. Mimet is one of the pupils at her little desk, but she's not paying attention. She's looking at a picture of a hot guy. Mm -hmm. She has a bunch of pictures of this guy, actually. Dr. Giggle sees that she's not paying attention, and he throws a bird at her desk. And he says, hey, did you find this boring? And he sees her pictures, and he says, how dare you bring these into the workplace? These are not (laughs) safe for work. Have you found a target? And she says, yes. And he says, well, all right. Sailor Moon is not the real messiah. When the time comes, the Holy Grail will select its master. And Mimet says, so you're saying we must awaken the messiah of silence? And he says, yes. That's me cut to a gun in the evil microwave. I know! Now we're getting somewhere. (laughs) The microwave does its thing. A voice screams, Ooh, Western! <laughs> and we see a cloud of smoke in the shape of a bird emerge from the microwave. Uh-huh. Mimet grabs the case that emerges and she walks down a hallway that leads to a door. She opens the door and emerges out of a cabinet in a department store, kind of a reverse Narnia. Uh-huh. As she walks away, she's all dolled up like Grace Kelly in Vertigo. Yes. She says, celebrities who bring dreams to their fans must have pure hearts. I'm not doing her voice. I can't do it. It's all good. <laughs> I'll use that. I'll use that. See what I mean? I can't really do it anymore. It's uh, very high register. I'll, I'll use that. <clears throat> I'll use that energy to awake the Messiah. Oh my God. You don't. You don't want this. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Hikawa Shrine, Setsuna is meeting with the squad, and she's explaining what we already kind of know mm-hmm. that the Grail can be very good. Or very bad, depending on who has it. Mm -hmm. And she says something interesting here. She says that if the bad guys get it, the future, she says, will inevitably change. Far be it from me to try and bring T2 into this. (laughs) But the Terminator movies are time travel movies. And between one and two, we have two different philosophies of time travel. That's true. The first Terminator movie presents a bootstrap paradox. Which makes sense because James Cameron is a fan of sci-fi writers like Robert Heinlein, who Mm -hmm. created the Bootstrap Paradox. So any changes that you try to make have already been made because they took place in the past. Right. So you're only bringing about the future that you're from, for good or bad. Mm -hmm. The second movie, T2, came out after Back to the Future, which which came out after T1. And I think that changed what... Hollywood often does for time travel. It presents a different view, the idea that you can go back and change things in the past. When you go back to the future, you have a sweet truck and your your mom's still keeping it tight. Oh, my God. And she looks pretty good. 
<laughs> now, I've, I've wondered what presentation of time travel Sailor Moon is trying to employ. Sailor Moon R, fittingly, would seem to suggest the T1 idea, since uh-huh. Chibi comes back, but she becomes part of the events that lead to the destruction of the Black Moon clan eventually. Arguably, yeah. if she had never come back in time, none of that would have ever happened in the first place. That's true. Yeah. But Sailor Moon S seems to suggest that it's more like T2 in that, depending on what happens right now, the future could be one way or the other. That's no, absolutely no true. No fate but what you make it. Yeah. And I would <laughs> I would think that the very presence of Chibi and Pluto here would suggest that everything will work out mat- no matter what. Uh-huh. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here to tell us that there's a problem. Right. But that's T1 thinking. You're so right. So maybe Paradox isn't a problem and the bad guys can win here. Mm-hmm. There's an episode uh, or a series of uh, Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor, uh, called The Pyramids of Mars. Mm-hmm. And it's very early in Sarah Jane's sort of tenure with the Doctor. Sure. As his companion. And they're fighting Sutek, you know, and, and his uh, his mummies from Mars or whatever. Okay. And she's like, Doctor, this is horrible. You have a time machine. Let's get in the TARDIS and just get out of here and leave. We don't have to be here. We can go anywhere. And he's like, oh, is that what you think, Sarah Jane? So... <laughs> He, they get in the TARDIS and he takes her back to present day London and it's a wasteland. Everything is destroyed. Oh. And he says, we're already part of that. So if we, like right now, leave, you know, in this time frame, nothing will exist here. Sutek will rule the entire earth and destroy it. Sure. Wait a minute. That came out in the 80s, didn't it? It sure did. Hmm. When this? Or no, maybe the late 70s, but still. Yeah. I've got my eye on you, Sailor Moon. <laughs> so they have to go back and finish what they were going to do or what they do won't happen, which is like another kind of way to do right. it. Then there's the Marvel way to do it, which is your, you know, the whole speech with the Hulk. You know, your past is now your future and yeah. it can't affect your present. So anyway, the point is it's either T1 or T2. And this seems to be T2. I which, think you're right. Which, once again, I don't, I'm just going to shrug. You can't, you can't. If that's a shrug sound. But <laughs> that is a shrug sound. Point point made a long time ago. Yes. Point continues to be, you know, we've never proven the theory of relativity. We just keep failing to disprove it. <laughs> Excellent. This is the theory of tituvity. <laughs> Ding. Um, it, I feel like Ami kind of like is trying to point that out too because she's like, wait, but you're here. And then Setsuna is like... Well, I got to go. Well, see you around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Satuna tells them about this uh, impending apocalypse, and Ray remembers, finally, her prophetic dreams. Uh, yes. And Satuna says, well, I'm out of here. But uh-huh. Usagi is like, what? And Satuna's like, I have to go with Uranus and Neptune to find the Messiah. Usagi runs after her, but she's gone. <laughs> Usagi says, I wish she'd told us more. But the cats say, just, just leave it she's probably got her reasons <laughs> what do you know cats i know i know you know something <gasps> makoto says uh too bad you weren't the messiah usagi yeah the show is saying she's not the messiah too much methinks i think you're right we'll see where that goes yeah mako wonders where they can find the messiah and Monaco says we should look at diners <laughs> What? I have no idea. <laughs> the Messiah might be a scary ghost. Woo! Huh? I tried looking this up. I found absolutely nothing. You still I low think... on blood, kid? I know. <laughs> it's like, I think she's just, is she like hungry or? I don't know where I... how the, go- the ghosts and the diners and the food all come into it. Yeah. And even Usagi's like, Jesus. <laughs> You know it's bad. Konnichiwa! Up comes Chibiusa, and she's decked out. She looks great. She's looking for Setsuna, or Pooh, she calls her, of course. Yes. She's bummed out when she hears that Pooh has left because she wanted to go to Japan Nature Park. Mm-hmm. Musagi's like, ho, 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 I got no time for that. Mm-hmm. But Manako is like, ah, I'll take you. <laughs> Musagi's like, uh, we were discussing something important. Wow, how the turntables... Playing the role of Usagi this episode. Yes. Monaco, I know. <laughs> Mina says, you're starting to sound like Ami. But Ami says, so uh, what's going on at this park? And Mina says, uh, uh, okay, they're shooting a Yosaku Ida movie there today. Yes. And Usagi's like, oh my God, Yosaku Ida, Jimmy, I'm coming with. There we go. Uh-huh. Mako says, he's cool like my senpai. 
Like, Ray? Oh my God. Sure, let's go. <laughs> the earth is doomed. Yeah, I know. Ami says, why do you think that the Messiah is there? And Usagi has a stream of thoughts or consciousness. You know, Ami's too clever, but that's not bad. She's so rigid. She's too serious. But she says, uh, intuition. And Ami says, okay, let's go. Now we're really screwed. I know. Ami says, we need a change of pace. We can't always be serious. Amina says, we'll study better in nature. But Ami says, no, we're going to have fun. Who are you and what you do with Ami? <laughs> okay. Ami was abducted by aliens and I don't know who Her this person hair is. hair is the wrong color of blue. Yeah, right. At the park, Mimet is spying on the movie set. She says, Yosaku Ada is shooting Akafuji gunman today. She spies him on set and says, before I take your pure heart and kill you, you just have to try these cakes. <laughs> I baked these cakes for you. As she runs toward Yosaku, she is flattened by a trio of women. They say, who are you? Yosaku's busy. Nice clothes, idiot. Oh, and Yosaku hates sweets. And one of them stomps right into Mimet's cakes, which have a little card that says, I made these for you. Ganba. <laughs> like Ganba Day. <laughs> the witches three say, even ants don't want those cakes. Do you not want ants? That's how you don't get ants. <laughs> Beat it! <laughs> Mehmet is destroyed, but here comes Yosaku. He says, sorry about my fan club. Were these for me? Such a waste. And he licks a frosted finger. Hmm. Well, thank you. And he walks back to set. Uh -huh. Mehmet is like, they said he didn't like sweets, but he took one look at me. Love! <laughs> this is love! <laughs> but I must kill you and take your heart. I know it's hard, but forget me. The shooting of the film, <laughs> so far so good. Yeah. The shooting of the film continues. Uh, it's some kind of Western, yes. uh, which is great to shoot in a park in Japan. Yeah, uh, right. I think Yosaku is supposed to be like a bad guy or an anti-hero because he's, he's got a star, but he's in black and he has like a like a dark mustache. Yeah, that seems to suggest that, yeah. right? I mean, he's a sheriff, but maybe yeah. he's like a conflicted sheriff. Anyway, he's doing a scene with his co-star, a redheaded actress. And I think we learn her name is Yumi later, but yes. she, they say it like once. Yes. Uh, and the text of the scene is that he's leaving, but he'll never forget her. Uh-huh. The squad is watching. They're eating it up, but so is Mehmet. She says, if I take your heart, your movie will never be finished, but I'll never forget your performance. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chibi can't see anything. She's too short. I know. A gust of wind takes her hat, the one that Kuko Mama gave her. Yes. And she runs after it. The hat flies near to a young girl sitting on a bench. Mm -hmm. and this is the uh, the weird girl that we saw in the previous episode. Yes. In the bedroom. Yes. Uh, and the one from the credits, I'm assuming. <laughs> She's wearing like a lace ruffle that looks like spider webs. And I get a yeah. real Lydia Dietz vibe from her. I, you know? I think that that... I yes. am alone. I am alone. Utterly alone. <laughs> the girl runs after the hat as well, and it lands near a stream. And Chibi says, thanks for grabbing it. But the girl seems like extra worn out from chasing it. And she says, it's nothing. It'll go away soon. It's like she's low on energy. Yeah. Maybe she needs a double it's shot weird. of espresso. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know what that's like. She starts to feel a little better, and Chibi says, let's play. I'm Chibi Yusa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl says, I'm Hotaru. And it's a nice moment. Yes. On set, it's a union break. Mehmet thinks, oh, I should get his autograph before I kill him. <laughs> and she finds Yosaku and his co-star in a grove. And they're kissing. <laughs> but for real. This is real kissing. I know. It's Mehmet not part is of like, the scene. No, you have me. How could you? She tears off her clothes. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh and reveals gosh. her evil trapeze artist costume. Yes. She opens her case and says, Demon, come forth. Uh -huh. Out of a cloud of bird smoke appears, Ooh, Western. Yes. A uh, busy, let's say, demon. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Uh, eye catch. Late eye catch in this episode. Yeah. A lot to get done mm -hmm. before we take a break. Yosaku grabs his co-star slash girlfriend and the two of them run. And Mehmet says, U Western, take his pure heart. Mm -hmm. U Western calls, hi y'all, Silver. Yeah. And appears atop a terrifying pogo horse. Yes. It's got the head of a live horse uh -huh. and one twisted horse leg that it bounces on forever. It is 
chilling. I'm going to have nightmares about this thing. She for also, weeks. <laughs> just to undercut that, she repeats her name over and over again with each bounce. It's like, Western, Western, Western. <laughs> she's, she's having a good time. Off. Yeah, she's enjoying it. Yeah. Usaku and his girl run back to set and he calls to the crew for help. But Western draws her gun and says, bang, bang, and shoots goo all over them. Just blue goo everywhere. Is it supposed to be like paintballs, do you think? Or is it just goo? I don't know. This is two goo goo episodes in a row. <laughs> so I'm going to... When we get to three, I'll take my apology. Oh, all right. Mimet says, this is for my cakes. Get them, Western. And the demon shoots them again. Mimet laughs uproariously. They're having a great time. <laughs> they are. Chibi sees this happening, but she can't transform with Hotaru there. Yeah. Oh, that's her first Peter Parker moment. I know. Get the She's camera. So Meanwhile, the girls are enjoying an al fresco lunch when a horrific pogo horse goes by. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> they decide to transform and they do it off screen. Yes. Because we got something coming up. Uh-huh. Back on set, Mehmet is up on the boom lift in the director's chair. <laughs> she's gonna, great. She's directing this murder. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Take his pure heart, she says. But before Western can act, out of the sunset walks Sailor Moon <laughs> and the Sailor Senshi. You've yes. disrupted the filming of an enjoyable movie. You're an outlaw who chases people with a gun. Wyatt Earp might forgive you, but we won't. I'm coming and hell's coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> Mimet says, shut up. Got him. <laughs> Get them, Western. And Sailor Moon says, leave her to me. Once again, Moon Spiral Heart Attack. No music. I know. Here's how you know. It's not going to work. Uh-huh. No music. No music. Yes. Uh, which, interesting tell, but okay. Yeah. The attack's hearts fly towards Western, but she shoots them down. One, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus. He was a handsome man. Wow. That's an English lit joke. <laughs> As the se- <laughs> We'll talk about it later. As okay. the senshi stand stunned, Western throws a horseshoe and gets a ringer on his I know! <laughs> on Osaku's co-star. Yes. It goes down. The demon strides up to Yosaku, vacuums his heart out of his mouth. It's And swallows terrifying. it. The birds didn't do that. No. Although she could have like gone, dived through his throat to go get it. I think she's like trying to like kind of like kiss him without really kissing him and then like finds it too hard. So just the vacuums it out. animation fails us in this, I think. Okay. Because it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's sort of a kiss, but it doesn't end with a kiss. No. So it's almost like maybe she's going in to to suck, to stay with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, but he's going like, <laughs> and he keeps moving his mouth around, you know? Like you could, right. in live action, you could do this. But yes. instead it just seems like this furious lip melee. And then she yeah. Just, yeah, takes it up. The sense you're like, no way. <laughs> Did that just happen? And the Met says, great job, let's go. But before Western can saddle up, a world shaking and a deep submerge strike the demon, mm-hmm. who briefly spits up the heart before swallowing it again. Yes. Tenacity. Yeah. Sailors Uranus and Neptune are here. Mehmet casts around desperately for an advantage and somehow sees Chibi and Hotaru hiding in the bushes. I know. <laughs> She's up on high on that, on that boom. She so, is. Yeah. She says, Western, get them kids. <laughs> the Western produces a lasso and ropes Chibi Yusa and drags her out of the bushes. Uh-huh. Mehmet laughs and says, don't move until we're far away or the little pink-haired kid gets it. Uh-huh. It looks bad. It does. But a dead scream <laughs> eerily <laughs> flies across the battlefield, yes. incinerating the lasso in Western's hands. Sailor Pluto is here. Yes. She says, Sailor Moon, do your double transformation. And she does. Uh-huh. Usagi produces the Holy Grail and says, Crisis makeup. Yes. Transforming into Super Sailor Moon. Western charges at her, but now we get the music-backed scepter attack. Mm -hmm. Rainbow, moon, heart, (laughs) ache! And as a beautiful rainbow passes over her, Western slams through a giant heart with a love, love, a lovely! (laughs) And is no more. The gun hits the ground, an egg appears and releases a bird-like spirit, and Usako's heart is free again. Yes. All eight sailor soldiers now stand down the net, who says, uh, You'll pay for this, I'm out of here! And she <laughs> runs away with celerity. The sailors are like, What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> when Sailor Moon once again collapses as she depowers, Chibi runs back to Hotaru, but trips and falls, and she sees that Chibi has barked her knee. Hotaru holds her hand over it, and as it glows, 
Chidi's wounds close. Hotaru's like, everyone in my class thinks I'm eerie. My power is strange and unusual. I I myself am strange strange and unusual. (laughs) But Chibi, Beetlejuice, but Chibi, but Chibi, but Chibi's like, I'm too young to have seen Beetlejuice. I think it's cool. (laughs) And Hotaru's like, thanks. I, ooh. And she is once again exhausted. Mm -hmm. Yusaku gets his heart back and Jupiter says, but why, <laughs> but why are they still going after pure hearts? Yes. The outer senshi bounce. They say, we're not like you. We're out of here. And the yeah. remaining senshi are like, where's Chibi? Well, she's walking her new friend home to her big house uh-huh. where her dad comes out to meet them. Yes. He says, you were late. I was worried. And Utaru says, I had a slight seizure. This is Chibi. Back up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yep, right, right. Maybe this doesn't translate either. perfectly, but it's yeah. like first part uh, before the second part. Yes. Hello, little girl. Yes. The dad says, thanks for walking her home. And Chibi says, let's see each other again, friend. And she runs off thinking, I miss my daddy. Mm-hmm. Aw. I know. <laughs> well, this daddy puts Hotaru to bed and takes a walk downstairs where he slips on a lab coat and laughs, laughs evilly. I know. It was a basement the whole time. I know. That's what you're excited about. The basement lab. This scorecard like, yeah. is nothing but check marks. All right. All right. Yes. You were right. And he's also Hotar's dad. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, come back and play sometime. Don't do it, GB. No. The weird glasses. It's a tip off. E.E. E. Cummings, the American poet, has yeah. a poem called Buffalo Bills. Okay. And it goes in his inimitable style. Buffalo Bills defunct, who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? Oh. You know, like a American literature? American lit? I mean, yeah, but I don't, we never read E.E. E. Cummings, so. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm learning that right now, so. <laughs> Not in your anthology of, of American poems? I don't think we read American poems. Who's I, Robert Frost? He, X-Man? He's a poet. Or, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's, I realized why the girls, first of all, they didn't transform because it made a cool reveal. When they come out on the in the old West town, I love She's that. like, wait a minute, is this like the volume? How does this backdrop work? But yeah. it's, it's cool. Yeah. But also, we got a more transformations to squeeze in now. Yes, if Usagi's gonna transform twice every episode, it's like we got to cut down on this time. It's yeah. funny too because we've always laughed about how they let's all transform together. Yeah, uh, clock ticking, three minutes go by, and now they're like, no, no, we got like. 20 minutes of stuff like before the break and then uh, oh okay don't transform now because we've already filled out the story so i like the fact that they could get so much in and have so much going on uh and then still have room to you know have all the and then we introduce like a new attack you know the the, uh, eerie blast or whatever it is and uh (laughs) dead scream and that's yeah and i just think it's amazing that it's like all that takes place in like eight minutes in the second half of the show well, it's true. I, it, they they squeeze a lot in. They squeeze a lot into this per- episode in particular. It's it's so dense. Oh boy. Um, but I I think I forgot how fast um, Usagi's like double transformation goes because it always seems like it's sped up. Yeah. You know, because it's like oh we we gotta uh, you know get this going because uh, we gotta get this in here you know but we. Um, saw like i feel like it had kind of like a video game feel to it like that attack you know especially when the ribbon of hearts came out and everything um it just sounded like a video game um and it was just like happening so fast um and it's i think you mentioned when you're watching it like a lot of the moves that she does are like the same but it's like now it now with butterflies and hearts and a rainbow and you know <laughs> so we got a lot of um extra things in here now so yeah um i also think it's interesting that uh, already it's one two besides stand before you yes that's what i said now 
<laughs> We're already setting up the, uh, well, not her. This is the Messiah. Yes. So is it like, you know, an election where there are two candidates for the Messiah? And really, whoever gets the grail and, and has the power or the spirit to, to wield it is your Messiah. Or are they selected? Is there only one? And it's like, yeah. this is the false Messiah, anti-Messiah. This is the real Messiah. Or or is it an anti-Messiah situation where there are two Messiahs and one is the good Messiah, one is the bad Messiah. And yeah, we have right. to see who's who. So, so many questions. Yeah, so many questions that um, have, are only being asked now because they didn't even bother to set anything up before. But, you know, we know that that's how it goes. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if – we should check the air dates on these. Like I wonder if they really like produce them in like two different blocks because we've noticed that every season is kind of split in half in terms mm-hmm. of the stakes and the characters we're dealing with. And so I wonder if they really just like production-wise, you know, it's like 11 and 12. Like it's one year, it's one season, however long it takes to air. But if they just, you know – Everybody goes on break after that and they come back and there's, you know, new directors or new writers if they're going to shift things around. Because otherwise you would think, because then that means that that second half isn't pre-written. They know where they're going to go, but they don't know. Oh, and make sure that we show a little girl sitting on a big chair in an auditorium and there's creepy dolls. Right. they, They never set that up. No. And that would be a really weird thing to set up and introduce, I guess. Yeah, but, it would. Uh, but it's like it's hard to guess ahead at these things when they don't give you anything. Yeah. It, it's hard yes. to know that there's um, a whole Black Moon clan of weird hair-colored people in the future when you're just dealing with a bunch of chicks, you know, in, in couture who are trying yeah. to step on our, our girls. I know. I know. Well, and I almost feel like, like this season – has um almost three different sections because like we have um the beginning where uranus and neptune are super mysterious um and then uh chibi chibiusa comes you know um and now we kind of we've already had some of the senshi get their pure hearts stolen and we're kind of figuring some more stuff out and and then also Kylonite is gone, uh, and we got a new bad guy, Yurio, and um, we're tr- we're trying to figure things out. And then, uh, but then now there's another change because we got a double transformation, and um, another Senshi shows up. Yeah, and you know, if you hold back uh, variety, then people will freak out when it happens, and that's kind of what's happening right now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we've been so starved for variety. Watching you dial, who I gave a five to. Uh, I love you dial. Uh, do you know? Send a new monster, a different colored monster, out every week, and now like there's some new elements, and we're like, oh my god. So it's like, I don't want. I'm not calling the show abusive, but whoa. But the abusers, but the abusers pattern is like abuse, 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 and it's like, hey baby, uh, here's some flowers. You here's know, a I'm, treat. Yeah, right. Here's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a dog in this scenario? <laughs> Nope, I he don't know what you're me, talking buddy. about. Then he gives me begging strips. <laughs> terrible. Oh, my god. Let's talk about some terrible people. Let's talk about... I want to talk about Mehmet really quick. Yeah. I I don't want to like Mehmet. <laughs> but this is a strong, strong opening. It, it is. Uh, you have I, to give her that. I love... Well, I love a, a buffoon. Mm-hmm. I see a buffoon. I don't know if that's true. Uh, but I love, uh, I love, what, do, what is it? I call it a Tom Sawyer type mm-hmm. because it's not enough to do her job. She has to create this world that she lives in, which is more interesting. And in this world, you know, she's in love with this guy yes. and she's doing this whole, she's doing both sides of the conversation. <laughs> I know. She's, and she's like creating this reality where, uh, oh, it's, I'm sorry, but I, I must. I have to kill you, but I'll never forget you. She's doing all this stuff. And it isn't just, she's not just messing around. Like when she, she sees really that he it. clearly has his own life and a, a woman that he's interested in, she's like, you, you're going to die. <laughs> like it's, yeah. I mean, she's insane, but she's uh, a hard worker. Very hard worker. She's on task. And insane. And uh, dramatic, too. The sense of a dramatic flair. The way she rips off her um, actress-type clothes, like her her trench coat and her glasses and her headscarf, and reveals her trapeze artist outfit, as you called it. Um, (laughs) 
which you know I would agree with that assessment. Um, she she has a flair for the dramatic, and she maybe she seeks out drama, if you will. Well, by um, c- helping to create it. Yeah, well, she created an opening uh, yeah. in the organization when she uh, murdered her coworker. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready to forgive her for that. So, um... Style points. Style points, I guess, yeah. But I do also like that she, like, um... She, um, she forgot to introduce herself because they're like, who, who is that? And, and then she just, like, she's also, she's, like, crying when she runs away. So, like, she, she's kind of a crybaby. I'm not saying she's exactly like Usagi or anything or the evil Usagi. I hope she's not 14. But um, she's definitely kind of immature at the very least, you know. What's her role in the organization? Because we talked about it. Udile is, is IT. Yeah. Or was. Or IS. Uh I Kamen, I I don't know what her job was. And wait a minute, if she's there's what so what wait a minute. Okay, org chart time. Yeah. There which is five. Yes. And we saw four desks in this episode. So did, Because Udiel is, is no longer there. Right, but is Karenite not one of the witches five? No, she's not. Oh, interesting. So So what was she like the the CEO or something like that? No, I mean I mean, if it, you don't okay. know, you don't know. In the manga, uh, I know, uh, Kalanite was kind of like, she was in charge of the Witches Five. They were her underlings. Yeah, she's she's the man, she's management. She's management. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that that fits in this too, even if though If she's we management, why is she their... going out? She should be the final boss when all the employees are dead. Why does Kirk <laughs> go down and do all the missions on the planet when he should be up on Maybe the they ship? didn't want to repeat Sailor Moon R where it really is just uh Rubet just sending out everybody who's Rubius, Rubius. Uh, sending out everybody who dies or yeah. is uh converted and then he's like, "All right, fine. Yeah, I guess I'll fight." Yeah. I'll roll up so. my non-existent sleeves. <laughs> my sleeveless top. <laughs> I'll merely massage my arms. All uh, right. All right, I'm ready. But Let's do yeah, this. Um, liking Mamet so far, guess against my better judgment, and uh, getting why are they collecting cards? This feels like yeah. a bit of a speaking of repeating things, a repeat of Metalia a little bit. Uh-huh. Because why are we going after these people? We had a twist where oh, the people have the thing; they yes. are the thing. I guess it's a little like they're the reincarnated Yomar or whatever, but it's not that. And so now that we've done that, oh, didn't you know? Also, pure hearts are good for energy. I think... But here's the problem. Yeah. You've never sunk one of these things. So no. aren't you guys all completely gasping for energy? Like somebody right. is going to have to die at some point to power the bad guys up. Of course, I said that in the last phase of this season. And look, I don't think that a kid show should be relentlessly dark, but... Somebody's got to die at some point. Well, I mean, I think she's got a magical saw, wish cup. She can bring everybody back. Well, we saw with like the Dark Kingdom. Like, I think that they, they, you know, they. Yeah, the DD girls killed everybody. Well, they, they, they got um, a bunch of energy that they sucked out of people, and then the energy went back to them. But maybe not all of the energy went back to them. Right. I don't know. But we're talking about somebody's the yes, spiritual representation of someone's heart. I know, and I think this is just my theory, but I think what happened was um, they, you know, had the reveal, the the mid-season or or late mid-season reveal that, oh, actually the talismans are within Uranus and Neptune, and oh, here's Pluto too, Um, and then they're like, crap, what are we going to do for the rest of the season? Uh, Guess what? The Pure Hearts also... or give oh, energy because to... in the manga, it's different in the manga. Well, actually. obviously it's different, but yeah, you know, like you're saying, they had to make 38 episodes. Out that's of what it, I'm trying so, to say. Yeah. Like they're they're, it's, they're stretching it out, hmm. but they yeah, that's what I think. Anyways, so. the talismans were within you the entire time. Yeah, in fact, the real talismans were the friends we made along the way. <laughs>
Backtracking is back for an all-new season. Hi, I'm Caliban. And I'm Gooey Fame. And we'd like to introduce you to Backtracking, the podcast that explores the real-world inspirations behind your favorite episodes of Star Trek. From historical events to classical literature to blockbuster films, we go where no pod has gone before to seek out the origins of classic Trek tales. Did you know, Gooey, that the TNG episode Too Short a Season was an allegory for the Iran-Contra affair? Yeah, only sweatier. Did you know that the Enterprise episode Regeneration was an homage to the John Carpenter film The Thing? Archer and T'Pol freezing to death over a bottle of whiskey would have been a controversial ending. As a dog lover, Archer would not like The Thing, I'm guessing. Oh my god, movie night is cancelled. Join us every other Thursday for a journey back to the beginnings of the Trek universe. Backtracking is available wherever you get your podcast. No, Porthos! Today for Kyoro Kyoro Miru, or Curiously Looking Around, where we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, we're going to talk about gun laws in Japan. Pew pew! Yeah. Wow. So, I know. I mean, I thought maybe like movie making in Japan, but... <laughs> yeah, I suppose we could have done that. I don't know why we didn't do that, but I didn't do that. Anyways. Guns. So, Guns. Guns, guns, guns. And anyways, I do think that there are some interesting facts in this, so hopefully uh, everybody will get something I out of it. I am interested, because here's what I know about Japan. Yeah. They don't got guns. For the most part. Oh, no, I mean, like, you know, the Japan Self-Defense Force has guns, and mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's a locker in a, in the big uh, police stations, you know, that have some guns or something like that. But, mm-hmm. like, people don't have guns, the... Generally, the cops don't have guns. You know, they use the power of white gloves to keep everybody in line. <laughs> it's a little more than that, but right. yeah. Well, look, I, <laughs> That's what you're you know. giving us the answers. Yeah, I'm right. just telling you what I think I know. All right, fair enough. So the Swords and Firearms Possession Control Law is a 1958 Japanese law concerning firearms. And, and swords. And, yes, and firearm parts, ammunition, and bladed weapons. Uh, and it was enacted in 1958, and it has been revised a number of times, most recently in 2021. And as of March of this year, 2022, the law also includes crossbows. <laughs> and without going into a lot of detail, You're out of luck. I will tell you, Hawkeye. <laughs> That uh, the reason why is because there had been um, oh, no. s- some uh, okay. incidents right. with okay. crossbows. Right. So, so they were like, no more. All this does, and I know that not everything is the reason that you know laws are local sometimes, is because they don't apply everywhere right. or can't apply everywhere. But the, one of the greatest arguments for more gun control, or at least charge term at this point, need to reframe the narrative, yeah. less guns, Correct. is that... There are no mass shootings in Japan. And, yes. th- and then, like, a bad actor will go, well, there's mass stabbings. It's like, yes, yes. but then you can go to the hospital and live, and yes. you don't immediately die. Yes. And the fact that there are random crossbow shootings means that whatever is happening, whatever is going on right now, the the dark side of the Age of Aquarius that we're supposed to be going into, uh-huh. you know, whatever the evil is that is making people do this, yes. persists no matter what weapon is available. I kind of think so. So you might as well get rid of the worst weapons. You might as well. Do you know what I mean? The it fact that yeah. somebody was still like, I need to shoot a lot of people, and they were able to find a crossbow meant... They absolutely would have used a gun if a gun was yes, available. Yes, that is absolutely So it is good correct. that there are no guns there. They don't have gun crime. I, that, and we I didn't, agree with you. We didn't know our hearts are broken like the rest of the countries. We didn't know when we started doing this and setting this uh, this up ahead of time Yeah, what was going to happen in American news right. just a couple of days ago. So we yes. deliver all this. You know, there's serendipity involved, horrible serendipity, but hopefully we can give you a picture of how things are different in other countries. Yeah, and I think that, like, the one of the things that I think is so horrible about all of the horrible mass shootings that happen in America is that there are so many of them that they blur together. And yeah, um, but I, I mean, think like, that that's a really horrible there thing. There weren't, I think I just I said to you the other day, it's like, yeah, there hasn't been a mass shooting in a while. And I said that, like... Because people were at home. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, yeah, but I said that like, you know, that was a good thing. Yeah. And then like immediately uh, what happens happens. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry to just... No, it's okay. Let's get back on track. So uh, gun and sword control started in Japan as early as the late 16th century under Toyotomi Hideyoshi in order to disarm peasants and control uprisings. Yeah. Several times in Japanese history, the new ruler sought to ensure his position by calling a sword hunt or katanagari. Uh, armies would scour the entire country, confiscating the weapons of the enemies of the new regime. Uh, and in this manner, the new ruler sought to ensure that no one else could take the country by force as he had just done. Yeah. Uh, so basically just enforcing their their rule. Yeah, this is the... Um... <laughs> Yeah, this is the let's change the election laws yeah. strategy. Right. Like, I'm not saying there should be a ton of swords around, but it's like, well, I made it here through swords, so take away all the swords. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's it's not fantastic. And but... this persists, like that having yes. no weapons persists even unto, a lot of times, the people taking the weapons. Uh -huh. You know, there is a, a weapon called the JIT. Uh, I think we've talked about it in the show before. And it is a iron rod or an iron rod with like a sort of hook, like a side okay. iron rod. And it is not sharp, but it's specifically for hitting somebody with uh -huh. or trapping swords, that little oh. split between the two bars. Okay, sure. You can grab a sword, break it. You can make a sword ineffectual because somebody sure. strikes at you. You can catch it and then get them. So even the cops who are going to get the swords don't have swords. Right. It'd be like if you sent, we're going to take all the guns off the street and you sent everybody out with like, nets or or stun guns or nerf guns or something like that yeah get those guns off the street right right uh, most men wore swords from the heian period until the uh sengoku period in japan um oda nobunaga sought an end to this practice and ordered the seizure of swords and a variety of other weapons from civilians in particular the ikoiki um peasant monk leagues uh, which sought to overthrow samurai rule and in uh, 1588, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, having become imperial regent, ordered a new sword hunt, and Hideyoshi, like Oda, sought to solid solidify separations in the class structure, denying the commoners weapons while allowing them to the nobility, a.k.a. the samurai class. Right. Um, so again, it's not only taking weapons away, it, you're... you're you're making sure that the ruling class has weapons. Yeah. And that the underclass or, you know, Until the, that the little guys don't. Until that and then you'll yes. take them from them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in addition, Toyotomi's sword hunt, like Oda's, was intended to prevent peasant uprisings and to deny weapons to his adversaries. Toyotomi claimed that the confiscated weapons would be melted down and used to create a giant image of the Buddha for the Asuka <laughs> Dela Monastery in Nara. As far as I can tell, that didn't happen. We melt so, them down and make a giant sword. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> By 1553, there were more firearms per capita in Japan than in any other country. By which year? 1553. So oh, we're kind of okay. skipping around okay. a little bit. <laughs> That's not quite as No. Dangerous. He's so, got a gun. Yeah, right. He shot somebody. Right. Three, three minutes later, yeah. he shot somebody else. Right. Yeah. Uh, since they required much less training than longbows, they were essential to the unification of Japan under Toyotomi Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu. Uh, for the same reasons of the sword hunts, later shoguns discouraged the production of guns. Yeah. Um, also, as, thanks, Spain. Yeah, I was gonna say I should also mention that going off of one of our our more recent shows, um, along with the a lot of the missionaries, um, like the Portuguese and the Spanish, uh, brought guns with them. Yeah, that was kind of one of the main introductions it's of guns. And it's funny because the Warring States period lasted for you know hundreds of years. Yeah, a, a lot of years. A long time. And uh, what brought it to an end? Guns, yeah, guns, guns, guns. Yeah, I know. Well, you you uh, be, can be really deadly with guns, so yeah. you know. Um, in 1876, samurai peasants and townspeople were banned from carrying swords. Here we go. Um, a standing army was created, as was a police force. 
The sword hunt put an end to the class system, so we are just done with it, while the earlier ones were intended to deepen the distinctions between the commoners and the nobles. Um, ultimately, however, the result of the sword hunt was the same as the results of its predecessors. The hunt ensured that the only weapons were in the hands of the ruling government and not available to potential dissenters. See the documentary, The Last Samurai. Yes. By historian Thomas Cruz. <laughs> I like that. Uh, after World War II, the Japanese military was disarmed, as I think most of us know, uh, which led to the Japanese government eventually enacting the Swords and Firearms Possession Control Law in 1958 to prevent gang fights involving guns and swords. <laughs> Uh, major revisions include the addition of a ban on importation and raising the age to own a, a hunting rifle in 1965 and tighter restrictions on shotguns and the shortening of acceptable double-edged blades and daggers to 5.5 centimeters in response to attacks in 2008. 5.5 centimeters, that's very big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Due to the tight control of firearms, very few people in Japan own a gun. Consequently, gun-related crimes are extremely low. In 2017, there were only 22 uh, shooting crimes. So this a particular statistic excludes accidents and suicides. Mm -hmm. um, Yakuza were responsible for 13 of those 22 crimes. Um, and I believe in those 22. 20... 22. Yeah. Uh-huh. 22. Yeah. A day, an hour in America. This is how low it... I, I looked at it like over the last, I, you know, 20, 30 years, and it, it, it has not gone really over 100. <sighs> and wow. these, these are all sorts of crimes. These aren't even just like deaths. I think out of these 22 crimes, there were three deaths. So... All right. Um, hmm. Police stations. I don't think it'll work, though. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. Um, but you have to keep in mind, too, that Japan has a very different, largely because they, um, they're, they're just their reaction to guns and firearms and swords and their history with it. They, they were like, you know, they're more okay with the, the stricter laws and like, um, and, I know, like a lot of it was the the uh, the Shogun and like forcing his rule. Take him away. Yeah, I know. Wait, so, no, no shung Shoguns. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Shogun control. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> police stations have guns kept in locked cases, like you uh, were hypothesizing. Yeah. But police very seldom use them. Even during student riots involving Molotov cocktails, the police did not use their guns and instead utilized body armor. Uh, you can purchase a gun in Japan, but there are a lot of hoops to jump through. First, you have to attend an all-day course, take a written exam, and pass a shooting range test with a score of 95% or higher. There are also mental health and drug tests that are performed at a hospital. Police check your criminal wow. record what? and for any ties to extremist groups, including the Yakuza. Uh, then they check your relatives and your colleagues, too. Make sure there's no shady characters that you might be passing the, the, the gun to. What about gun shows? I don't think they have any. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> at least I didn't come across any mention of them in my research. Yeah. Um, police have the authority to deny gun licenses, and they also have the authority to look for and confiscate firearms. Only air rifles and shotguns are permitted in Japan. Handguns and semi-automatic weapons are banned. So there's that as well. Yeah. Um, there are also restrictions on the number of gun shops within an area. In most of Japan's prefectures, uh, which is their essentially their states, like you think of the United States, um, right. uh, there cannot be more than three gun stores total. Whoa. In each prefecture. So, yeah. Huh. Uh, you also can only purchase new cartridges by handing in used cartridges, used cartridges purchased on your previous visit. So. Well, how do they know that you have used cartridges? 
Well, if oh, you oh, want oh, to oh. buy a new one. I want 10 bullets. I need 10 empty bullets. Yes. Well, what do exactly. they know? how do they know what you used them for? They, they don't. Right. Well, there you go. But. Um, they 10 you know. dead bodies. Oh, my somewhere. gosh. Well, well, then they'll be able to well, track you. These bullets are getting old. We better use them. <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe I'll make some uh, banana bread. What? Out of these old bullets. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. I get it. Sorry. It doesn't that's, make any sense. That's all right. All right. <laughs> um, gun owners must tell police where the gun and ammunition are stored, and they must be locked up separately. Police also examine all guns once a year. Um, after holding a gun license for three years, it expires. If you want to renew your license, you must take the class and all of the tests again. Uh, additionally, after 10 years of shotgun ownership, a license holder may apply to obtain a rifle. Japan has, <laughs> yeah, Japan has been described as the country with, quote, perhaps the first ever gun buyback initiative in 1685 and is the first nation to have imposed gun laws in the world. So that gives you some sort of indication of what we're dealing with culturally here. They're not melting them down and making a giant gun, are they? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, maybe they are, and they're putting it in their giant microwave, and they're turning it into a daemon. <laughs> no, it's too horrible uh, to think about. Um, as such, gun ownership is very rare. Uh, 0.6 guns per 100 people in a 2000s in 2007, according to the Small Arms Survey, and this is compared to 6.2 in England and Wales, and 88.8 in the U.S. So, so, so according to this Small Arms Survey, uh, out of 100 people in the U.S., 88.8 own guns, compared to 0.6 out of 100 in Japan. Wow. Yeah. Um, police in Japan are trained to put much higher attention on utilizing martial arts than guns. <laughs> yep. Oh, the real registered weapon. Yes. Is my hands my and fists. feet. Yes. Yeah. Um, all officers are required to become a black belt in judo. Shut up. I am serious. No. Yes. Uh, Tai... Taiho Jutsu, literally arrest technique, is the word for the martial arts developed by Japan's feudal police to help arrest treacherous criminals. Taiho Jutsu utilizes uh, the kebo, a short police baton, and uh -huh. emphasizes ways of disarming people with hand-to-hand -hand fighting and taking down criminals. Taiho Jutsu training is a large part of everyday life for police officers in Japan. Quote, the response to violence is never violence. It's always to de-escalate de it, says journalist Anthony uh, Berto. Uh, what most Japanese police will do is get a huge, huge futon and essentially roll up a person who is being violent or drunk into a little burrito and carry them back to the station to calm them down. Um, so it's not exactly a futon. It's actually called a protection sheet, and it's made from plastic, but the concept is the same. It is a plastic sheet. They will, a group of police officers will get a suspect who is being unruly. They will put them in the middle of the sheet. Shh, go to sleep, go to sleep. They will wrap them up. And they have little handles that they all help carry them away <laughs> in. Hey, it's like having a net. Yeah. Shoot a net on that guy. Right. And I think, honestly, this is a hu more humane way to deal with people, um, really, when it comes down to it. And, and this is not life-threatening yeah. either. Well, it's hard to do that with only, mm, on average, eight weeks of training. But in Japan, yeah. you train for a year. Mm -hmm. To become a police officer, which is if you're a high school graduate, they skip. There's like six months that they skip somehow. If you're a college graduate, although I don't know how it works in Japan, but are you going to become a police if you're a co if graduate you're in college? college? Yeah, yeah. You're, you got know. your work suit on and you're, you're looking for a job, right? Yeah. Inter your if that doesn't work out, your interview suit. You're going to fall back into the being a police officer. I anyway, don't know. a year, fifty-two weeks, or or eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Neither here nor there. Yeah. I mean, that's so much longer. Anyways, um, following World War II, pacifism became one of the major philosophies in Japan. 
police only started carrying guns after American troops made them <laughs> in 1946. Yeah, for, come here, come here, here. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, right. Right, like that. And, and it was for security reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You, you got to be safe. You, you know what's going on up there. Well, you can't like yell at the. What are you going to do? Tai jutsu these looters? I know. No, you got to shoot them. I know. Itadaki Mas with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? Uh, at Hikama Shrine, the girls are having tea as they're listening to Setsuna tell them about the Holy Grail, some sort of herbal tea, and there's some kind of snack as well. Um, and then later we see Mimet has uh, baked cakes that she was trying to give to uh, Yosaku, uh, but his fans ruined them and told her that he doesn't like sweets. Yeah. Um, and I... Uh, of course, they the girls have a, a lunch later that uh, Mako uh, made, and Usagi is two fisting some onigiri. I don't know what else was in the lunch, uh, but I did kind of want to go back and focus in on the cakes. Yeah. Uh, so the cakes appear to be a couple of uh, pieces of strawberry sponge cake called shoto cakey, and I know we've talked about this before. It's different from American shortcake. And around Christmas time, it's called Christmas cake. It's the same thing. Right. It's just seasonally, it's Christmas cake. Uh, and it has Christmas decorations. And the other kind of cake appears to be a Mont Blanc cake. Mm -hmm. So I, are you familiar with a Mont Blanc? Yeah, but to let the people know. Okay. So in uh, it, it's a Mont Blanc or an Italian Monto Bianco, and it's a dessert of sweetened chestnut puree in the form of like vermicelli. So it looks kind of like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's topped with whipped cream a lot of the time. Um, and it, it was created in the 19th century uh, Piedmont in, in Italy. And the name comes from Mont Blanc as the, the dish resembles a snow-capped mountain or a white mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Japan, they have made it their own with many different variations. Uh, they often make it look like a nest on top of a cupcake with a half of a curry con roni or a chestnut in that was soaked in heavy syrup. Um, and this is what we see in the episode um, or, or some sort of fruit in the middle. So it kind of looks like an, a, a nest with like a single egg, if you, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, a lot of different flavors are made in Japan. Sometimes it's, it's made to be pump with uh, pumpkin squash or purple yam. Um, often uh, sweet potato are used instead of chestnuts. Uh, and along with chestnuts, sometimes uh, there is cocoa, matcha, or sakura are added. Huh. Uh, there are also fruit Mont Blanc with flavors such as mango and strawberry. They love their Mont Blancs in Japan. I just want you to know that. Feel engaged. We rate a baddie one to five dark stars, five being the most wicked. Uh, the diamond in this episode is named Western. Yes. Uh, I so, guess. yeah, and I'll explain. Okay. Uh, Mimet's diamond's name, uh, uh, Mimet's diamond's names all start with Ooh. Uh, which, Ooh. which is with, or the letter U, um, which represents the Japanese word ukai, which means cormorant fishing. Oh, I mean, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Good kit. Good one. Uh, cormorant fishing is of course, uh, we talked about is it's a traditional fishing technique in which fishermen use trained cormorants to catch fish in rivers. And, um, his historically cormorant fishing has taken place in Japan and China, as well as Greece, North uh, Macedonia, and briefly England and France. Uh, though cormorant fishing once was a successful way to fish, its primary use today is to serve the tourism industry. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it's something that the tourists like to see. You know what the tourists would like to see? Mm -hmm. Pearl diving. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I could see them getting into that. That's a joke that you get if you know how they get the pearls. Do, don't they, like, you, you have to be, like, really, you really got to irritate the clams to, to get pearls and, oh, like. Well, you should stop talking. Okay. <laughs> I guess I don't know what I'm talking Hopefully about. Hopefully the clams aren't irritated. Uh, no, this is where the girls uh, go down and they get the, the pearls, but uh, no shirt. No shirt. You don't do any shirt. Oh. The, the ama. Oh. Okay. All right. They're topless. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> yes, we, we I don't went, remember that. We went to a Japanese art exhibit about art from modern Japan and a lot of photography, and they had... Oh, I forgot about it then. Yeah, okay. And they just have a <laughs> loincloth and and a knife, and then, you know, like a bucket or a bag or something like that. Okay. And they, they can hold their breath for minutes and hours, and this is all traditional. Like, there's nothing, like, you know, sexy about this, but as soon as white people showed up... Uh, they figured out oh, it was sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great, fantastic. <laughs> uh, now, now that you know that, yeah. hit back twice on your podcast app and then listen to that. Oh <laughs> my god! Talk about it over. All there. right, anyway, all right. Good for the tourists. Yeah. Uh, to control the birds, the fishermen tie a loose snare near the base of the bird's throat. Uh, yeah. The snare does not stop the bird from swallowing small fish but prevents the bird from swallowing larger fish, which are held temporarily in their gullet. And when a cormorant has caught a fish in its throat, the fisherman brings the bird back to the boat and has it regurgitate the fish. Yeah. And like cormorants, I don't know how much they understand the deal that we're making here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that they seem to go for it, I guess. I, I hope they get to eat some big fish. If, if you, like, you know? you know, choked me or <laughs> tied a rope around my neck, I would be like, yeah, okay, well, let's get this rope off my neck. Yeah, but I'm done Apparently here. they're just like, well, you got a little fish. Well, they, I think the way they, they depicted them in this, even if they are just toys, they, they made them kind of look like they were kind of dumb. So <laughs> are, are you saying the birds are dumb or are they docile? I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, I wonder how smart a cormorant is. Yeah, I, yeah right, exactly. But mm. I feel kind of bad for them, and you know, just the same. Uh, so so uh, there are 13 cities in Japan uh, where cormorant fishing takes place. The most famous location is Gifu in Gifu Prefecture, um, which has continued uninterrupted for the past 1,300 years. It's cormorant fishing. Um, so that's uh, that's a lot, something. A lot of fishing. Yeah. And cormorant fishing in Seki also takes place on the Nagara River, uh, but it is called Oze cormorant fishing or Oze ukai. And only the cormorant fishing masters in Gifu and, and, and Seki are employed by the emperor and called imperial fishermen of the royal household agency. Whoa. Yeah. So there you go. Fancy. Yes. Western is a play on how the Japanese pronounce the word Western, which is Uesutan, and also a reference to Western films. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's uh, not super exciting. It's so many. Speaking of, uh, it's got so many cowboy hats on. I love it. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, let's get to that. Okay. Um, so her design, she has aqua skin, at least her face and the top part. I think I think she's wearing a bright pink bodysuit. That's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, I th yeah. And and, and built-in heels, which is uh honestly, I know she's got so many hats on, but a missed opportunity for cowgirl boots. I know she de her built-in yeah. shoes does have do have spurs, but give me some cowgirl boots anytime. Yeah. Um so yeah, she has short, uh, kind of asymmetrical, shaggy purple hair, red eyes, uh, white lipstick, and a red arrow tattoo on her left cheek. Because why not? Yeah. Uh, she is wearing a long tan poncho with red triangles at the bottom, red long gloves with fringe, and the cherry on top of this too much Sunday, a sombrero with a cactus on top. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, come on. Um, she is also wearing a gun belt for her green paintball or goo gun. And it also holds her lasso. Um, she's wearing a choker that matches her poncho and horseshoe earrings, which she throws. At yes. One point, yeah, they have which utility. Which is pretty great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and now we're up to our rating. I am not a fan of her overall design. I I think it's too much, and it's the sombrero with the cactus on top that puts it over the edge for me. I mean, uh, what's the the designer who's like it, Coco Chanel? Coco Chanel. Thank you. Um, she would just throw up at this design. <sighs> So that's all I have to say about that. Um, her horse having one corkscrew pogo leg is so freaking creepy. So creepy. I don't like it. Um, I like that she shoots the hearts of Sailor Moon's spiral heart attack. It's unexpected, powerful, and sets the new stakes. 
I like how she throws her horseshoe earring like she's playing horseshoes. That was really fun. Um, overall, I think that she's effective but doesn't stick out. So I'm going to give her three out of five stars. Okay. Um, well, five. Really? <laughs> yes. She's it's fantastic. Really? Yes. Okay. Every part of it. This is another thing where we she she beats the odds twice because it's too much stuff. It's too much and stuff. And it's way too far down a theme. And yet it works. She is exuberant. She has, you know, she is, uh, she's just an existential horror. You look at her she and is. I don't understand, but everything works. I love her fringed gloves. I, I love her uh, revolvers with a little heart on the stock. Yeah. I like her spurs and her serape. Like it all is completely on brand and works. In fact, the only thing that doesn't really work is like, I know that she's a monster or whatever, and so that she has to have this, but like her red eyes and her blue skin and her green mouth, like those are the monster things. But if she just like looked normal, this would be like a character from an anime. You'd be like, oh, this is, yeah. a, what episode of Trigun is this? Sure. You know? But like everything about her works. She's super effective. She announces, we are in a new era here. She does. This is different. This yes. is not going to be some lady with a door and I don't like to fight. Like she's, she's here to go. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think she's just wearing a cactus on her head because she's like, why not? Tell me I can't. I don't, I don't listen. Okay. Yeah. I love everything about her. I All think right. that she's great. Uh, fair fair Five enough. stars, which she... One, two, three, four, five. She's him right down. Uh, Jesus, he's a beautiful man. All right. <laughs> uh, farewell, my lovely, where we rate the way they go out. She stares dumbfounded in disbelief that her enemy has another attack. She struggles to get out. Lo oh, lovely. I laugh, so she gets points for that. I'm going to give it uh, three out of five stars. Uh, this um, this is a four. Uh, it was very strong. Uh, she even put her own little twist on it. I guess I don't. I guess I don't know what it would have taken to get a five, but I guess I I would have known it if I had seen it. That's fair. Right? I think like so. Like the Supreme Court in pornography. I would know it when I saw it. <laughs> uh, we bring those divers back. No. Um, oh but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was good. It was solid. Yeah. Um, and then just missing, I don't know, one little grace note. But yeah, really good. All right. Subu or Dubu, where we talk about the most interesting differences between the sub and the dub. In the dub, the Messiah of Silence is called the Sovereign of Silence. Yeah. Okay. I don't I'm hate it. To, yeah. Uh, Yosake Eda's name is altered to Joshua Eda. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, we have. There, Miyamoto Wade. Musashi became yeah. Joe Musashi. Actually, that's a thing. Joe Musashi is a character in a video game. Oh, really? Yeah. My stupid <laughs> brain full of dumb facts. <laughs> Filled in the wrong fact. Ruins my tossed off jokes. Gosh, dang it. Um, Hotaru retains her name as well as the spelling of her name, which is very unusual for uh, main characters in the show. And I am not complaining. I just think it's cool. So. I guess she's weird. Because she's weird. Yeah, I guess. I not, guess so. Not Lydia? Not Lydia. <laughs> Missed opportunity, I guess. Does she sound like uh, Winona Ryder in the dub? Uh, great question. I don't remember what the Clover Way she sounds like in the Clover Way dub. Hmm. Um, it didn't. There was no note that said sounds like Lydia from Beetlejuice. I'm the ghost with the most, babe. Oh, but uh, I don't know. Um, I kind of there's a part of me. That I've seen a lot of people who are like really want to watch the um, uh, the the Deke and the Clover Way dubs because they feel nostalgic for them. Yeah, sure. And, and I feel that way too. But now that Viz, you know, has the now license. I just don't think dub. that's going to happen. A brand new dub. Yeah. That's uh, like when I went to see, this is a while ago, and I think it's already been remastered again, but um, a while ago, I don't mm -hmm. want to say how long, uh, they remastered Akira yeah. and they released it in theaters, or at least there was a couple prints going around. And I went to see it and I was really excited to go see it. And that night was ruined for two reasons. Uh oh. One, I went to a, I was going to have some tempura. Shrimp and vegetables. Ooh. And it was not tempura. It wasn't oh. panko. It was like just like breaded. Where did you go? Uh, it's a place near here. Really near here, actually. I don't think oh. they, it's a theater anymore. Um, okay. But you could eat. You no, know, they bring you food. And yes. Also, but not like cinema cafe or whatever. It was supposed sure. to be. So it's like you guys are supposed to be like upscale and you don't even know how to do tempura. And then second, secondly, part of their remastering was 
re-recording the voices. Uh-huh. And I'm like, just clean up the original voices. Nobody wants to hear this. Yeah. So it was all brand new voices and like just different performances. And I'd already seen Akira, you know, 40 times or whatever at that point. So it's not, Wasn't it just takes me expecting. out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's that temper though, that was, that was a bummer. <laughs> I mean, if they're not even going to use the... Oh, the squishy tempura. tempura. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. Who wants that? <laughs> Come on. Throw this in your face. Come on. Uh, the scene where Mimet isn't listening to Professor Giggles' lecture, so he throws the cormorant at her, is cut. Uh, the Because we can't have violence. Abusive t-shirts. Yeah, right. <laughs> Leave them kids alone. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the scene where Mimet walks out of the wardrobe like it's Lion Witch in the wardrobe was cut. What? Yeah, I, I guess we don't want to give kids ideas. Um, I don't know. Don't hide in wardrobes, kids. I, I hid don't know. in so many things. I know. When I was a kid. Of course, that's hide and seek. Accompanying my mom shopping. Uh, you know, the, the circular clothes racks, right? Yes. A kid, they probably put like spikes inside of them now. Oh but my gosh, A kid can it. fit in there perfectly and oh, then your sure. mom comes by and you're like, here's Johnny, right? Come out there. <laughs> Did you do that? Oh, this will fit you, by the way. It's a good call. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, of course. <gasps> Did you try to scare your mom? Yes. Too? Okay. All right. I never really tried to scare my mom. I tried to scare my sisters all the time. <laughs> so that I did do. Um, I, I, was, wasn't allowed, I was pretty good at yeah, that. I wasn't allowed to <laughs> scare my sister. Oh, well, that's too bad. Because <laughs> that's fun. Anyways, sorry, sisters. Uh, in the dub, when Rainy shows up at Rage, she says, Hey there, girlfriends. <laughs> and, and then, is Trista still here? Uh, and in the original anime, and I mentioned that because in the original anime, Chibiusa never calls Pluto by her first name and instead just calls her Pooh. So she would not call her Trista. Well, she wouldn't call her Pooh. No, but she she wouldn't. She would have some other nickname for her or some, some other term of Poo, endearment. Poo, Poo, how would a baby say Pluto? Pudo. Pudo. Also sounds bad. No, that also sounds bad. Um, but just come up with a nickname for her or something like that. Um, that. Boo Budo. Yeah, Peachon. I don't know. Peachon. Actually, there there's a character in in Ramna One Half named Peachon. So yeah, yeah. but not in the English dub. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think actually. Uh, anyways. Do you have to go again, Peachon? <laughs> have to go before we left. Oh my god. Uh, in the dub, Amy says to Serena, we're supposed to be looking for the chalice. Seeing as how you found the chalice, i.e. the Holy Grail last episode, oh, no, way. you don't. Oh, clever way. You need to find the Messiah. So they got it wrong. Yeah. In the dub, Rini says to Hotoru, my name's Rini. Rhymes with teeny. Mm. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it either. Uh, Pluto's attack, Dead Scream, is renamed Pluto Deadly Scream. Uh, and to make Which it... Which might make more sense. I Yeah. The, Pluto, you know, is a mysterious character. Yes. But why is she shooting the eerie deadly balls and like it, it, you said her power was time what what is what is she shooting what is yeah, this I know, I know. who is this weirdo yeah i know i know there's just so much more mystery that uh, we don't know I, I agree with you uh but what what makes it worse is they directed the voice actor to scream the word scream scream yeah what even though it is said really quietly in the original so, but like, but she's she, screaming, scream. Yeah, that's like when I was in karate. Yeah, last week, <laughs> a bunch of eight-year-olds. No, when I was a kid, oh, uh, and yeah, I took karate. It wasn't karate; it was taekwondo, which is Korean. Sure, but they it gets all mixed up though. And they talked about the kiai. Mm-hmm. Kiai is means a yell. You know, it means sure. when you are going to. Punch, you're, you're focusing your, your chi, you are putting it into the to the blow, you know? That's why you go, wah, or whatever. Yes. And it wasn't explained very well because we all went, ki-ai, 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 which meant we were yelling, yell, yell, yell. Uh, that okay. was a little bit less dumb than this. Just just a little. Not, not, not a lot. Uh, yeah scream what she was but she actually screams with her voice scream it's so yeah <laughs> anyways anyways uh crisis makeup was changed to moon crisis power 
Um, Let's talk about crisis makeup. Yeah. What? <laughs> it, it's a makeup in while you're in crisis. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Crisis makeup is like in your glove box, right? That's when you're like <laughs> looking in the rear view. Backup. Little bit of a uh, little eye there, yeah. eye there, little one, yeah, get the right. lips. Okay, all right, we're good. Yeah, it's your emergency stash, yeah. right? Yeah. This is crisis makeup. This is crisis makeup. I didn't think my crush was going to be here. Oh my gosh, it's a crisis. <laughs> get this makeup on. Uh, in the dub, lovely was changed to woo wee western. Okay. Yep. Stop. You can so, stop now. You can stop now. <laughs> uh, and I do have some trivia. Uh, when the victim's heart crystal is taken and swallowed by the daemon, the victim's skin becomes gray. I feel like the victim's skin sometimes became gray before as well. Um, um, yeah. It wasn't all the time. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, you know. It's inconsistent. It is. Uh, Sailor Moon utilized Rainbow Moon Heart Attack for the first time in this episode. And Pluto utilized Dead Scream for the first time in this episode as well. Um, And this marks the first episode where Hotaru, uh, her name was given. And this is the first time that she has a speaking role and that she utilizes her healing powers. Yeah. Uh, it was also the first time that Professor Tomoe's face was fully visible. And I think uh, the first, I don't actually know that we get his. Hotaru Tomoe. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Someday we'll translate that. Yes. Well, I can tell you a little bit right now. Uh, well, maybe I'll just save it. Save it. Okay. Uh, like and... a Werther's original given to you by a supervillain who's pretending to be a nice father. <laughs> Who's got Too really, specific. yeah, he's got really creepy glasses and it's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with it's that. It's like, Chibiusa, that should be your tip off. Yeah, he's, he's a weird guy. Yeah. <laughs> Who can see out of those? Come on. Uh, in, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, in Sailor Moon's speech to the da- daemon, she mentions Wyatt Earp, a 19th century American law officer. Um Anything to say about Wyatt Earp? Uh, he's coming and hell's coming with him? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> he was a real guy, but he often yeah. gets romanticized. Oh, well, I mean, you know, he... Look, everybody... Look, you look into anybody's... Nobody did one thing back then. You oh, look into course. everybody's backstory and it was like, well, he uh, shoveled manure on a farm until they made him sheriff, but he uh, killed right. his deputy by accident and then moved even farther out west and became a riverboat gambler. And then he... Uh, became a rancher yes uh but he stole land from somebody else and then later right. ended up uh, fighting in the civil war and uh you know defeating the the south or something like that and so it's just everybody's right. just got complicated stories and wyatt's was complicated but he did if you like cops he did yeah. uh you know several times um become a peace officer and was regarded as a as a pretty good one yeah yeah. So yeah, like if we're if she's you know if this is in the theme of a Western film, she's you know she's stepping out you know she's the she's the law mm-hmm. in this scenario, and the yeah. Wyatt Earp is a good person to call on. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, now we're up to our our rating. Um, I feel like the creepy intro to the show is very off putting, but in a good way. Um, I I like. Um, <laughs> How Usagi is reacting to Ami questioning um, why they're going to the park. Um, that was really funny. I And I love... Mim- Mimet was a standout of this entire episode, I have to say. Um, I love how dramatic she is about uh, y- Yosuke and, and this is love and debating whether or not she should kill him and saying she wants an autograph first. I mean, the, the entire thing was hilarious. Um I love that we finally get to meet Hotaru in this episode and how sweet Chibiusa is with her. And uh, Sailor Moon speech over the backdrop of the Western set as the other senshi join her walking towards Western is excellent. Uh, I also love the reveal that Hotaru's dad is Dr. Giggles. And that transition of him and his street clothes to going down to the basement and putting on the lab coat. Well, they know what they're doing. It's it's excellent. They know what they're doing. Uh, but I, I just we meet a guy with floppy hair and glasses. I wonder who it is. I, I but, know. But they tell whether you know it or not. They play it straight. They they, they do. do. They hit all the numbers and they do it. Yes. Um. I feel like this is kind of a grab bag of an episode. So 
even though I like a lot of the parts, it doesn't totally hang together um, 100% well for me. So I'm going to give this three out of five stars. Five stars. Oh, wow. Okay. Or roses. For as roses. We lax Sorry. On reporting. Yes. It shouldn't work. It does. All there right. is way too much going on. There is. In this episode. We are introducing new characters, new bad guys. We are wrapping up something, an old thing. We're starting a new thing. The girls are barely in it. <laughs> They're in it at the beginning. Yeah. Then they come back at the end to uh, win. Uh, we are. We have a villain who is, we're introducing her. We're introducing her, her idiom and how she fights. Uh, we're also, she's doing a whole side thing where I know. she's in love with the guy that she's trying to kill. And yet she's like, hmm, I don't know kill him though. Uh, his autograph's going to be worth a lot. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then we're also doing another meta thing where they're they're on a movie set and so you got the girls being like the sheriffs but she's all she's becoming the director and then she's telling people what to do while she's riding like the boom chair and everything yes. it's it's way too much yeah it is an entire hat store uh-huh. and yet it works totally like it is ebullient like it just it is so pleasing and this is exactly why i got into this this is why i do this <laughs> It's it's got to be five roses. All right, it's fantastic. Okay, um, my English title, and I I really struggled this <laughs> with this, so it's not super Englishy, but I like it anyways. <clears throat> Hotaru in waiting. Who heals the healer? <laughs> 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 healer heal thyself yes uh my title my me title is a me title through and through it is best western oh okay it's just every time all right Whoa, the sirens so, okay uh, are sorry. the police here <laughs> Jeez. come on best western it, it's pretty good it's pretty good <laughs> Respect. Uh, <laughs> Respect my authority. I do. <laughs> Next episode, we are talking about episode number 113. Yoki Tadyo Ie Bishojo Hotaru no Himitsu in Japanese. A house filled with evil presence. The beautiful Hotaru secret. The English translation. And the English title, Rini's Risky Friendship. <laughs> Roke tada yo ie ie uh oh it's a haunted house yeah all right so, yep. I love the risky friendship yeah I'm not really sure how I feel about that Couldn't we have a me have a friend now she's just taking roles from the other girls not only is it weird that we just we're gonna send Chibi into the literal lion's den but this could be any one of our girls could be like oh I made a friend. But it's like it, they are trapped by – and this is a great argument for why you should listen to our live-action Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon show reviews uh-huh. because they were able to deepen – because you, now you've got human beings yes. who can't just be catchphrases. And so they're able to deepen the relationships between girls. So maybe this girl's isn't super happy with this other girl right now. Uh-huh. Or maybe these other girls right. are having a real love affair right now. Or maybe this girl feels left out. And then she is possessed by an evil spirit and starts fighting the other girls. Right, as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, this is, at this point, they're just kind of the squad. And it's fine, but until they get their solo episodes, we don't really give them a ton to do. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of sad. I miss the, I, I, I miss I the, the old days. I, I Remember when Usagi was just so many tooling characters. around by herself because she was the only one? Yeah, for like the first seven <sighs> or so episodes. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, I, I mean, now we just keep adding more and more characters. And so. so I know. This well. Is, this will be Chibi's thing. But in the manga. Oh, that's a Chibi, new record. I know. Chibi uh, befriends uh, Hotaru right, as well. well. At least so. they're keeping it true to form. Yes. True to the original story. Yes. In the manga. You got it. (laughs) Well, that's our show for this week. In the name of the moon, we'll be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor News. Jesus, he was a beautiful man.